everybody. Welcome to another expert exchange where we address real questions with expert answers. My name is Morgan Taylor. I'm the editor of Abode Magazine here at HAA, and I'm going to be your moderator with our host, Betsy Marshall of Allied Orion. Today is Wednesday, January 13th, and today's topic is creating a resilient culture. Before we turn it over to our host, I'm going to review some housekeeping items. Thank you all for joining us today. For our viewers, please ask any questions that you may have in the Zoom chat box or in the comments via Facebook Live. Once we get through the questions that we curated, we will get to your questions. This is a micro webinar, so we're gonna try to keep the session to our 30 minute time window. A quick disclaimer, we are not public health experts nor attorneys. This webinar is provided for general information purposes only and does not constitute legal or professional advice. No member should act on the basis of any material contained in this webinar without obtaining proper legal or other professional advice specific to their situation. Please consult with your management company or property owner to address specific issues and to form your own company guidelines. With that, I'll turn it over to our host, Betsy Marshall. Thank you, Morgan. My name is Betsy Marshall. I'm with Allied Orion Group, and I'm going to be your host today. We're going to be talking about creating a resilient culture. And we're going to be talking with our expert today, Stacey Holden from Appfolio. Uh, Stacey Holden, uh, she has over 20 years of experience in multifamily property management and currently serves as an industry principal and, and director at Appfolio, uh, a former controller of one of the largest property management firms in, nor in the Northwest. Stacey has firsthand experience in property management is an, an, and is an expert on how organizations can leverage technology to solve urgent business challenges. Uh, prior to Appfolio, Stacy spent several years in the real estate technology group at Intuit. So welcome, Stacey. Hi. Hi, Betsy. Thanks, Morgan. Hello, everybody from HAA. Hope you're having a great day. Well, so our topic today is uh, creating a resilient culture. And through uncertain times like, like we're in, uh, the most stable organizations are those with a strong culture at their, at their foundation. Building a Building such a culture doesn't just happen by accident or through good fortune. It's an intentional act um, requiring thoughtful leadership, authenticity, and an ongoing commitment to shared vision. So with that today, we're going to learn how you can build a workplace loyalty um, while orienting your teams towards growth. So super exciting, relevant, love this topic. Um, so with that, I'm just going to jump in. So the first question is, how would you define resiliency uh, for a team or organization? Great question. And again, thank you, uh, HA, Morgan, Betsy, and hello to everyone. Resiliency. Well, that's kind of been a buzzword for 2020. Um, some people represent it by putting a cactus on every desk. Other people have stay resilient as their screen backgrounds. I would say the best definition for resiliency I've seen is to absorb, cope with, and recover from pressures, challenges, or adversity. Now we know that all teams have ups and downs and you know I would think, and I do believe that our industry is a little ahead of the game because we always have to deal with crises now and again because we deal with where people live. But I think the key to the resiliency is really to stay centered and consistent, regardless of what the day, or in this case, the whole year of 2020, brings the teams. So it's not only coping, but it's staying consistent, both internally within the team and externally with your customers. Okay. And so what are some ways that managers can keep their teams aligned and productive? productive during these challenges, challenging times? So before I answer that question, I want to give a special, if we had an award, to all those that manage people for 2020, thank you. I, I wish I had a statue that I could show you. Being a leader in 2020, not easy, not easy, because you're, you're leading teams and you're leading whatever is going on in your homes because you're not going to the office every day. So regardless of your role in your organization, if you lead a team, congratulations, thank the Academy, write your speech and send it to Morgan. Maybe she can publish them. But I'm going to say a word that is everyone talks about when, it, when you're saying keeping teams aligned and motivated. I'm gonna say communication. Now we all say that all the time, 
but I want to take a step back, especially in times where you're trying to be resilient. I have spent much of this year talking to different people and different leaders within the industry. And you need to make sure that you understand how your team can consume communication. Uh, one leader mentioned they communicate seven times in seven different ways. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, they said, for example, I have properties all over the country. I might have a millennial who is a leasing agent, and I might have a maintenance uh, leader who is a baby boomer. Those two will accept communication in different ways. And so really gone are the days of, well, I'm just gonna send a memo or I'm just gonna send an email because millennials and Gen Zs, they like to talk via text and not necessarily via email. Baby boomers and others would rather pick up the phone and have a phone call. I'm not too sure how many people still wanna Zoom, but we'll leave that for a different conversation. But I think understanding where your teams are at and meeting them where they are with communication is really key to keeping them motivated because they feel engaged. They feel like that, oh, you're thinking of how I work and how I operate. And that makes their days faster versus someone saying, oh, okay, now where, where the scrolly thing on the text, where was that text message or where was that email? And so I think how you communicate, not just what, but how, is really key to keeping your teams engaged and motivated. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. And really being able to identify and speak to them directly, making mm -hmm. sure the message gets across. So in your, the, the, when we talked about resiliency, your, your key phrases were to stay you know, centered and consistent. Mm -hmm. So how can you make sure that work is done consistently and that processes are followed the same every time? That's especially a tricky question when we're dealing with so many people that are remote. And I think this is where technology can help a lot. Um, you know, I'll give an example. Again, one of um, uh, the leaders that another leader that I'd been speaking to has uh, properties all up and down the West Coast. Well, the state of Washington has a 14 day turnaround for security deposit refunds. The state of Oregon has 30 days. And depending on the county of the state of California, it can vary. So even just something as what is our business process around a security deposit refund can vary even within a company. So how does that stay consistent? Well, I'll give you an example where technology can really, really be effective. So Appfolio, for example, has what's called a workflow tool. And there are other workflow tools out there. But what it allows you to do is basically put a step-by-step -step process within the application so that not only the users know what to do and when by looking at their dashboard every morning, but leaders such as yourself, Betsy, would be able to say, let's take security deposits, for example. You would be able to go to your dashboard and say, oh, this one is due tomorrow. Let me drill into that and see where it's at. Oh, wait a minute. The inspection hasn't been done yet. Let me follow up. What the technology does is it creates visibility. So you may have a new employee, Betsy, that, that is doing a security deposit for the first time. You won't know because you're in a different state if they're stuck. So having that visibility into where they are within the process not only helps you as a leader, but uh, maybe it's a training issue or maybe there's something wrong with the unit, but it also helps the employees to self-serve. What I mean by that is step three in the security deposit process is to schedule an inspection. Well, instead of looking in a manual, if you're leveraging technology, you click a button and the schedule is automatically created or it's created automatically when you finish the step before. So the, that's a simple example of how you can keep things consistent by leveraging technology, especially when you have people in multiple states dealing with multiple different jurisdictions. Yeah, it's like with the technology, remember and figure out what, what's supposed to happen when as a tool for the team. And that, okay. Right. Uh, what about shifting gears a little bit? What is, how would you describe burnout? And what are some early warning signs? 
Burnout. I don't know what was a bigger buzzword in 2020, resilience or burnout. <laughs> I think I think they're in competition with each other. Right. Uh, there is no question. I don't care who you are and what your role is in the universe. I think everyone has experienced burnout in one form or another. And again, as leaders, I think it's never been more difficult than to manage and lead people within this past year. Uh, some of the symptoms, gosh, there's so many, but let's just talk about another buzzword, Zoom fatigue and exhaustion. So uh, a lot of us sometimes have those, for lack of a better phrase, Sunday blues before we would get up and go to work on a Monday morning. But when you have those blues on a blurs day because of the way we've been working remote and no day has been the same, it, it, it can cause your daily routines to be so disruptive that that in itself can cause burnout. What I mean by that is the alarm goes off, we get up, we might not be happy about it, but we get up, we you know, go to work, we do our work, we come home, we do our things. That routine has been turned upside down. For some people it's, right, it's back and right-sided, but for others it's not. And so that lack of routine can example exhaustion without you even being tired really. And so because we don't know what normal is, it's difficult. You know, wh what do we do now? What do we do next? R routine is really, really important. Um, I think the other thing of burnout is looking at engagement. You know, for, for some people and some personalities, it's difficult enough to say hi as you're passing in the hallway. But for you and I, Betsy, to really get to know each other, that's that's super hard over Zoom. I mean, we could probably get there. You seem fairly extroverted, so do I. We can get there, but not everybody's that way. And so, taking that personal connection, taking this the true physical eye contact, really draws some people in. And so, when you have people in your team that are usually pretty good at communicating, that all of a sudden you're not hearing from, or they turn their Zoom camera off a lot, or their emails have gotten shorter. That's a sign of disengagement. And that's also a sign of burnout. So there are many other things, but those are the two that I've heard the most about in our industry over the last few months. Yeah, and you were talking about like all this, it's almost, we went into the situation where everything was upended and we keep thinking we're going to get back to it. And it's, our new normal is, it's like, are we at the new normal? Are we there yet? Are we getting there? It's been really interesting to see. We can talk a little bit about that kind of before this. So um, with that being said, you know, kind of identifying that burnout and the potential for that burnout, how can management leaders keep their teams motivated and kind of overcome that burnout and, and, and keep them on task? You know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this and there's various different opinions of, you, you know, let's do happy hours and let's have, you know, um, our marketing team gets on the phone every morning at nine o'clock, they do trivia, they have a contest. And so they have ways to keep engaged. However, I wanna take a step back. And I think really, if you wanna make an influence as far as leadership, I think the best way to start is through vulnerability. And what I mean by vulnerability is leaders have bad days too. Where, you know, leaders are not superheroes. No one is a superhero. Don't tell the kids, but I still believe in the Justice League, but no, there's no superheroes. If you can create a space with vulnerability within your teams and say, I don't know about anybody else, but man, is today a hard day? Seems really hard for me. And if they're hearing that from leaders, that sort of lets the guard down and it, it, it creates a space for them to be vulnerable with you. Like, oh my gosh, I know I had to try to get the kids to, you know, do homework. And then the phone rang and the dog was barking and, it, and I was on Zoom and I forgot to hit mute and I might have swore. And, you know, there's, it, it's, it's okay that maybe people are having a crazy day. And I think if you get vulnerable with your teams, I think that helps it, the reality set in and not that it's this performance for your leader. 
the other thing too is one of the things that our team actually does every day when we get together is it seems silly and simple, but it does really make you think differently is we say what we're grateful for. And mm -hmm. we take the first five minutes of every meeting and everyone just very quickly around the room doesn't have to be huge you know um in fact yesterday's meeting i was grateful for my coffee <laughs> oh i don't know about anybody else but the first sip was amazing and that's what i was grateful for and it really sets the tone for the agenda for the rest of the call and i think even doing that with your residents too is also kind of level sets them and 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 their stresses because the small things really do mean something today they really do and so coming from a place of gratitude and also as a leader being vulnerable and allowing your team to be vulnerable with you without judgment people are motivated they're yeah, engaged. It's, almost, it's like you get to, you can relate or they can relate to you you get to relate to each other i guess i should say which hopefully brings um, back that kind of being on the same page and, and, and everything. Okay. That's right. So then, you know, speaking of some of the examples you used just a moment ago in the last question, um, was, you know, all these distractions that people have. So how do you, how would you say that we can get the employees or everybody for that matter, even ourselves to bring our whole selves to selves to work? So that's super interesting because, um, you know, at Appfolio, we really are fo focused on our culture a lot. Um, I'll tell you a couple of different things that we do, especially as leaders, especially since we've been doing things over Zoom, um, is, you know, you're used to calling somebody, hey, Morgan, it's Stacy. Hey, Stacy, how you doing? Oh, fine. How you doing, Morgan? Oh, great. No, really, how, how are you doing? And, and spending a few minutes, you know, with your teams or your peers or even your residents and just say, I, I'd really like to know how you're doing today and make it sincere. And, you know, especially since you can't see each other, checking the box, hey, how are you? No, seriously, how are you? What can I help you with today? How is it going? You know, how can I help? I think those make a huge, huge difference. Um, the other thing too is having your uh, employees understand the purpose of why they come to work every day. So I was talking to a leader of another property management company and instead of doing the gratitudes every morning or when they meet as a group, he would have his team remind each other why I'm here. Why, why do I work for this company? Why I'm here? Uh, whether that's through company initiatives or my job as, you know, a property manager is to make sure everyone puts their head on their pillow and rests easy at night and really drawing in the purpose. Uh, not only is that important, but there are a lot of studies that millennials and Gen Z's, for example, there was a st recent study that I read that 60% of millennials and Gen Z's want to know the purpose and have comfort around the purpose more than the salary. The purpose is more important than the salary. And for some people, that's really hard to believe. Well, salary pays my rent and all the other things. So isn't that the most important? But a sense of purpose and a sense of making a difference, especially to the younger generations, is really, really important. And so coming forward with that even if it's a, a community event that they participate in, or even if it's just internally, like we help someone out, you know, a fellow employee has a death in the family, let's, let's put a meal plan together and have a delivery sent every day from someone different. So just really making your group like a family for lack of a better phrase. So those are some techniques that I've, I've learned from other leaders in the space. Okay. Um, I wanted to check in with Morgan real quick. Did we have any uh, questions or anything before we continue? No, I don't see any questions um, on Facebook Live or within the chat. Um, Brent Williams says, hi everyone. And we got a hello from Midway Management mm -hmm. um, at Buffalo Heights and Memorial Heights. But other than that, no questions so far. Um, I would love to emphasize that millennials do love to um, know their purpose in their day-to-day -day jobs. I can say that that's 
sorry, true for me. Um, and I love the gratitude practice at the start of um, meetings. I think that's a really um, cool tool to use, but carry on. Okay. Um, and hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, please answer, please put your questions in there if you have any. Um, so the you 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 done Stacey, you've done a great job of talking about you know once everybody's there and in it you know keeping the culture going. What about when you're um, onboarding? So what can leaders do to improve the onboarding process for new employees? So again, last year brought us a really unique experience. Uh, we had people start jobs without ever going into the office, mm. without you know meeting their boss by what you and I are doing today. And that in itself is difficult. Um, but I, I really think the, the consist the challenge is twofold. It's one, you know, consistency and making sure that when you leave that training session, whatever it is, that especially when people are working remote, which fun fact, our industry probably had more remote experience than any other industry because we have leasing agents and maintenance people and people that don't always come into the office every day. So we might be a tiny bit ahead of the game, but making sure that tools are available for a new employee to self-serve, right? Because if you think about it, you know, um, you go through a manual and, and you've got this new software and you think you're learning, but it's kind of deer in headlights, right? Those, that first week, you're like, I don't even know what's going on and what's your name and what's happening. But if at the end of that training session, if I were to show you and through technology that you would be able to, for lack of a better phrase, Google a question on how to use the software and you could find out from your, yourself whether it's reading and looking at screenshots or watching a video or joining a live um, chat session uh, or joining a live classroom with that piece of technology and, and getting those questions answered, well, that's definitely a much better experience than flipping through the pages before. So I think you can really leverage technology in onboarding people, not only what we experienced last year, but but going forward. And I think that really, it helps because also, I don't know about anybody else, but when I'm starting a new job, I kind of like to find out the answers myself because I don't want to keep asking everyone because that seems a little embarrassing. Like Morgan, how do I hit the mute button on Zoom again? Probably doesn't want to hear me ask that question anymore. Um, I, I know it's now down in the lower left-hand corner. So thank you, Morgan. That was great. I appreciate that. But I don't want to ask that question. I want to be able to figure it out myself. And especially if I'm working remote, because I, I can't turn, there's, there's my laundry room. My laundry room doesn't know how to use the software. That's the only thing that's next to me. So I think having those things in the onboarding, especially from a technology perspective, is super helpful. Okay. So then, um, real quick. So, I mean, you shared so many great tips, and so kind of some new things that we're doing, and how technology can help in this new normal. If we're even there yet, what's what are some things that you think might stay with us, even as we, you know, come up come out on the other side, if you will? Do you think that there's anything that we're doing differently now that might become um, just the expectation going forward? Absolutely, I really do, and I think that you know if you look for good news in a crisis that we had in in 2020 i think it's the escalation of technology that's going to be really really exciting and again spoiler alert gen z and millennials they're not saying oh gosh this would be great they're expecting technology i mean imagine this if you were a leasing agent and and you wanted to go get a new job and you went into a leasing office and they sat down and were like, oh my gosh, we're so excited to have you. Here's the index cards of all the residents. They're in alphabetical order. You'll find their phone numbers on it. There's your technology. Do you think anyone, let alone a Gen Z and millennial is going to want to work for that kind of company? No. So not only do we need to enhance the technology that we've done, but we need to go to the next level. 
Uh, for example, one of the things that at Folio did during 2020 because of COVID is we did virtual showings. What I mean by that is using your cell phone like FaceTime, but within the app folio application, you could show someone a unit remotely. Mm -hmm. So the leasing agent could be in a model, they could be looking. So let's say Betsy, you were looking at it, you and I would be looking at each other right now, but then I would also turn it around and you'd be able to see the unit. I think things like virtual showings are not gonna go away. Uh, I also think uh, artificial intelligence and increasing that in, the residential space is not going to stop. Digital leasing assistants uh, that can answer questions in a conversational way, 24 hours, 365. So people like you and I can actually spend time with our communities, which we were hired to do and not stay behind and do emails. That's been accelerated by COVID. Um, I was a former uh, controller. So for my accounting friends, machine learning for invoices, so not only scanning those invoices, but having machine learning read the invoices and pre-populate data and information so that accountants don't have to necessarily go into the office every day. So I think things like that, artificial intelligence, keeping things in app, not only are going to continue, but I think it's going to escalate how fast they come into the residential industry. Agreed, agreed, agreed. That's great insight. Um, for sure. I see all those things and it's been it's gonna be really interesting how this makes that long-term impact. Um, before we finish up, I wanted to check with Morgan and see if there was any last minute items. That's all I had. So I didn't know um, if you had any questions from your viewers or anything. Nope, I don't have any questions from our viewers today, but thank you for checking in and thank you very much for Stacy. For joining us today. This was a great session. Um, Betsy, I'm going to kick it back to you. Uh, well, yes, thank you everybody for joining us. And Stacey Holden from Appfolio, thank you. Your insight was very valuable. Um, I made a lot of notes myself and, and I really appreciate your feedback and, and everything. Uh, we're going to be at this again uh, Wednesday, January 28th for another expert exchange. Please join us. Uh, where we ask real questions and uh, from the experts. And then we also have uh, a YouTube channel, HAA TV. So please subscribe to that where you'll see this session and, and any of our other future sessions and previous sessions and, and everything there. So uh, thank you again. Yes, thank you, Betsy. And again, if there's any on-site challenge that you need guidance on, please email me at com at haaonline.org so that we can turn it into an expert exchange session. Until then, make it a great day. Bye guys. Thanks everybody. Uh...